Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, I am going to review the recently released Fedora 33. Now Fedora has been a very challenging distribution for me to review each time they put out a new release because I feel like the project does a lot of things very well, but other things, well, I kind of feel like they missed the mark in several different categories. With each new release of Fedora, I generally frame the review around the question, who is this for? Who should be using Fedora? Why should someone choose it over something like Ubuntu or Pop! OS? So let's go ahead and dive into Fedora 33 and see if that question can finally be answered. First and foremost, the installation process is the same as it's been for as far back as I can remember. Of all the improvements in new Fedora releases, the installer gets the least attention and sees the fewest changes. It's not a difficult installation process, it's actually quite easy. The Fedora project even makes available a Windows and Mac OS utility that's aimed to simplify the process for people that are coming in from a different operating system. But when you compare the Fedora installer against that of other distributions, it just has the fewest options of any GNOME-based distribution installer. It's not terrible, it just needs more options. But to be fair, I won't consider this a downside of Fedora because the installer does get the job done. It does legitimately install Fedora on your laptop or desktop. And, you know, that's exactly what it aims to do. So it does succeed at the task it was designed for. I just feel like if the developers would put more time and attention into the installer to make it more modern, that would go quite a long way. Fedora includes the latest version of GNOME, as always. And this time around, GNOME 3.38 includes a brand new welcome screen. This new welcome screen is designed to give new users some general hints as far as how to use the desktop. This makes it easy for newcomers to learn where important things are and provides a bit of hand-holding that beginners are sure to appreciate. There's nothing truly exciting about this welcome screen, but honestly, anything that can make the user experience better is definitely welcome. When it comes to look and feel, Fedora has always lagged behind Ubuntu and Pop! OS, in my opinion, because it has the least amount of branding as possible. The wallpaper this time around is actually, well, awesome. It's probably my favorite default wallpaper the project has ever had. But aside from adding the Fedora logo to a few places and adding an awesome wallpaper, Fedora defaults to use the GNOME default look and feel as much as possible, and they add virtually nothing to make the look and feel stand out. For some users, that's actually a good thing, because having a default and stock GNOME look and feel is what a certain subset of GNOME users actually want. But where this breaks down, in my opinion, is that you'll get the same look and feel on any distribution if you install GNOME manually, and you can even get the vanilla GNOME experience in Ubuntu as well by installing just one package. While some people may love the default GNOME look, I find it to be bland and boring. And that's probably why Ubuntu, Pop! OS, and other distributions take it upon themselves to retheme it. Not improving the look and feel just seems lazy to me, and that's not to say the developers of Fedora are lazy because I know that they work extremely hard but I feel like the theming gets no attention at all and it desperately needs it. Normally, a common rebuttal to complaints against the theme is to simply install a different theme. But currently, the theming engine in GNOME is terrible and is a major downside of this desktop environment. In fact, the theming in GNOME is a complete train wreck. And that's why it's best left up to distribution developers to wrangle new themes because that's typically something that's beyond the average person to create. Now to be fair, GNOME will be releasing a new theme engine at some point in the future, and when they do that, this will be a non-issue because theming will be extremely easy. When it comes to default apps, I've already mentioned that Fedora 33 comes with GNOME 3.38 as the desktop environment by default, which is a release with improved performance, but not so many standout features. The ability to customize the application grid with folders as well as being able to rearrange the icons is nice. I also like being able to enable the display of the battery percentage without a custom tweak. 
And having a separate reboot and power off options in the system menu is nice as well. But honestly, GNOME 3.38 just doesn't have any exciting features going for it. The performance improvements are definitely welcome, but every GNOME release seems to improve on that, so that kind of goes without saying. The pre-installed applications this time around include the usual fare that you're probably already accustomed to if you have already used Fedora in the past. For example, Firefox as the default web browser, LibreOffice as the Office Suite, Rhythmbox for music, and then the usual array of GNOME apps such as Maps, Videos, Photos, and so on. As with previous releases, the way that you typically install new applications in Fedora is still done with GNOME software. GNOME software is actually a highlight of Fedora in my opinion because the integration with GNOME software is probably the best of any distribution. It just works flawlessly. If you see an app available in GNOME software, installing it is extremely easy. Installing updates is pretty straightforward as well. There's actually a tab in GNOME software that's dedicated to updates. And that makes it very easy for pretty much anyone to understand what updates are actually available. And it's just a single click to install them all. Unfortunately, where I think Fedora falls down within the software side of things is that you'll rely on third-party repositories quite often to get software. In fact, I find myself using third-party repositories more often in Fedora than any other distribution and things that are normally included in other distributions in the stock repositories are only available in third-party repositories such as RPM Fusion that you have to install. Now a new user is not really going to know that they need to do that. I of course know that that's necessary because I've checked out virtually every Fedora release that the project has ever put out, so this is common knowledge to me. But the developers claim that Fedora 33 is supposed to be good for new users and it's supposed to be a just works experience. But when it comes to software, I really don't find that to be the case because when you compare it against Ubuntu and other distributions, I just don't think that you should have to rely on third party repositories as often as you do in Fedora. RPM Fusion itself is pretty easy to add. I added both the free and non free versions of that repository and that did open up more options. But I wouldn't have had to do that in any other distribution that is based on GNOME that I typically review. And applications such as Simple Screen Recorder and NVIDIA were only available with RPM Fusion. And that also includes Steam as well. I completely understand that not everyone likes Debian and Ubuntu, but if a new user has to jump through additional hoops in Fedora that they don't have to jump through in other competing distributions, then why choose it? Now, like I alluded to earlier, the release notes for Fedora 33 mention that it's supposed to be a just works experience and a good fit for beginners as well as advanced users. Unfortunately, with my test, I find that Fedora is a great distribution for intermediate and advanced users, but it's absolutely the last distribution I'd recommend for beginners. Ubuntu and Pop! OS make it very easy to add NVIDIA drivers, the proprietary NVIDIA driver for those video cards that require it, but Fedora makes you jump through unnecessary hoops to do the same thing. And don't get me wrong, I get it, the NVIDIA driver is proprietary and pretty much evil. But if someone wants to play games and their computer has an NVIDIA card, then regardless of the politics surrounding the driver, the user is just going to want to take full advantage of their hardware and just get it to work as easily and as quickly as possible. In summary, many users out there, they just don't care if the driver is proprietary. When it's time to have leisure time, they just want to play their games. Now, it could be argued that since Fedora is technically catered towards developers, that gaming isn't really an important subset here for them to focus on. Now my rebuttal to that is a lot of developers out there just so happen to play games and many of them aren't going to want to have a separate machine for playing games. When work is done for the day, they just want to open up Steam and play games and not switch laptops or desktops to a distribution that handles gaming better. So it's important for Fedora to make these things work out of the box if they have any hope in competing against Ubuntu and Pop! OS. Now I think where Fedora 33 really shines is how fast it runs. 
This is probably the fastest and most efficient running version of Fedora I have used in a very long time. When you switch between applications, launch applications, access the applications menu, or just pretty much do anything in the user interface, it's just very, very responsive and feels great. But is that alone enough to make someone want to choose Fedora over other distributions that basically do most other things better? I don't personally think so. Now, every time I review a new release of Fedora, I think to myself, is this the version that is going to be completely awesome? Are they going to knock it out of the park and make this the GNOME distribution of choice, something that I can recommend to everyone? Unfortunately, this time around, well, no, I just can't recommend this to anyone unless you really love Fedora already and you're running Fedora 32, then you're going to love this one because there's definitely no downsides in upgrading from a previous release. And if you already like Fedora, you'll like this one a lot. If you already hate Fedora, you'll still hate this one too. It's not going to change your opinion either way. But when I asked the question earlier, who is this for? Unfortunately, I have to answer pretty much no one. I just can't recommend Fedora because even though they claim it's for new users, it's the last distribution I'd ever recommend to a new user. They would get frustrated with Fedora 33 compared to other distributions that make things even easier. And if you are running GNOME on a gaming machine, then you should be running Pop! OS or Ubuntu. I can't think of very many scenarios in which Fedora 33 is the recommended GNOME distribution in my opinion. Now, I have no doubt that the developers of Fedora have put their heart and soul into this release and have worked very hard to make it the best version of Fedora that they possibly can. And I don't want to downplay their involvement and expertise in all the great things that they're doing. But when I look at this through the lens of a desktop distribution and whether or not I can recommend it to my audience, unfortunately, the answer is no. So definitely try out Fedora 33 if you are already a fan of Fedora. I think you'll love it. But for everybody else, I recommend you steer clear of this release and go to Ubuntu or Pop! OS. So what are your opinions of Fedora 33? Let me know in the comments down below, and I will see you again real soon. Thanks for watching.